Hey Booktube, welcome back to the History Shelf. I'm your host Peg. Say, you know, I've been out of commission for the last couple of weeks and I meant to make this video before I got sick. I didn't know I was going to get sick. Um, but I want to show you today uh, something fun here at the History Shelf. We're going to have a giveaway of a fantastic, tremendous, magisterial new book just put out by Princeton University Press. As you know, I'm a big fan of theirs. Um, I was lucky enough to procure a copy um, to share with you guys and uh, we're going to do a giveaway of this. Uh, my, uh, my friend John David, another booktuber, uh, also he did another giveaway of this book and uh, so I'm sure you've seen it but now that I'm well again I'm here to make this video to cover the Soviet century. Um, Archaeology of a Lost World by Carl Schlogel. Now, as you know, if you follow this channel, that I am a huge um, history nut when it comes to uh, Russia, Soviet Union, any type of those type of uh, Russophile studies, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm so into it. This book is amazing. I haven't, obviously, I have not read all the way through it. It is huge. Um, but I have started to tap into some of the different chapters and what's neat is you can kind of jump around in each chapter but what is the Soviet century archaeology of a lost world about? Well I'm going to tell you and so you can make up your mind whether you want to join the giveaway it'll be a, a, a random generator what I'm going to do is just take all the comments below from folks um, who are interested in receiving uh, a free copy Princeton will mail it to you um, once I give them the winner and, uh, and you can enjoy this as well. But let's see if this would be something you'd be interested in. So it says here, The Soviet Union is gone, but its ghostly traces remain, not least in the material vestiges left behind in its turbulent wake. What was it really like to live in the USSR? What did it, what did it look, feel, and smell, and sound like? In the Soviet century, Karl Schlogel, one of the world's leading historians of the Soviet Union, presents a spellbinding epic that brings to life the everyday world of a unique lost civilization. Uh, it says here, a museum of and travel guide to the Soviet past, the Soviet century, explores in evocative detail both the largest and smallest aspects of life in the USSR, from the gulag, uh, the planned economy, the railway system, and the steel city of Magnet Magnitogorsk. Magnet Gorsk. Magnet Gorsk. You're going to learn how to say a lot of interesting words when you're uh, reading this book. Um, to cookbooks, military medals, prison camp tattoos, and the ubiqui ubiquitous perfume, Red Moscow. The book examines iconic aspects of Soviet life, including long queues outside shops, cramped communal apartments, parades, and the Lenin Mausoleum, as well as less famous but important parts of the USSR, including, and this was the chapter I really enjoyed, I kind of, I was uh, jumping around in this, there's a chapter on the great Soviet encyclopedia. <laughs> uh, the voice of Radio Moscow, graffiti, and even the typical toilet, which became a pervasive social and cultural topic. Throughout, the book shows how Soviet life simultaneously combined utopian fantasies, humdrum routine, and a pervasive terror symbolized by the Lubyanka, then as now the headquarters of the secret police. Drawing on Schlegel's decades of travel in the Soviet and post-Soviet world and featuring more than 80 illustrations, the Soviet century is vivid, immediate, and grounded in first-hand encounters with the places and objects it describes. The result is an unforgettable account of the Soviet century, and it really is, guys. Um, from my explorations through the Soviet century, uh, especially when the book arrived, I was just sicker than a dog. Uh, by the time I had some energy to actually pick up books again, um, I was just flipping through this, and I'm just amazed um, by just the depth and breadth of what... Carl Schlogel uh, covers here. I mentioned to you, well, let me tell you what parts, uh, some of the different parts <clears throat> of the book that are titled. We have uh, part number one is Shards of Empire. Um, and that kind of talks about uh, the Russian Revolution. Um, it has a chapter on the returning to the seat of Petrograd, 1917. 
Uh, part two is called Highway of Enthusiasts. Uh, kind of like different trips to different areas using the highway as the motif of, you know, traveling through. Um, part three is Soviet Sign Worlds. And this is the part that covers uh, what the, uh, the pub sheet here uh, mentioned as far as like prison tattoos, um, graffiti, how names change, which I thought was very interesting. Um, I'm going to turn to that right now, actually. See if I can read you just a little bit. Like, each part is uh, separated by a dark page, black page. And this this one is uh, the life of things. That's part, what is that, part four. Um, yeah, names are not just hot air, is chapter 15. And it says here, it gives you kind of just a an interesting look at how... Oh, the Russian words for things, you know, where they began, where they came from, how they evolved over time. Um, let's see. And then we have the graffiti. Um, here's a, the city of Ber Bereznika in the Urals, one of the greatest centers of phosphate mining worldwide. It became a Russian Atlantis. And here's a picture. So obviously very heavily um, illustrated with photos. My dog Daisy wants in on the action over here with her ball. <laughs> um, it's interesting, I was reading the foreword by the author, and, you know, like, why did he write this book? You know, what, what is this, what is the purpose of putting together such a massive work? Um, let me, let me read you real quick what he wrote. All right. So he wrote this in 2017. Um, I'm not going to read you the entire preface, um, but what, something that I thought was interesting to me, um, he kind of goes into some detail about you know um, his experience writing about his, his Soviet history. Um, it says here, working on the Soviet Union has been a lifelong preoccupation. And for me, as a historian socialized through the study of the Russian language and history, this has meant Russia above all. Um, and then he mentioned some of the books that um, he has worked on in the past um, and the different uh, messages he was trying to, to convey in those different books. Um, he talks about ooh, one book, which... Mm, I wonder if it's been translated. If it has, I'd like to get it. It's called With Terror, Terror on Traum, Moscow, 1937. He, I, he says, I attempted to clarify what happened during the Great Purges of the Stalin era. Portraits of Eastern European cities from the 1980s on enabled me to gain access to the Soviet life world and the cultural landscape of Eastern Europe. If there, was, if there was one topic I avoided, it was the war of, an, of annihilation that Hitler inflicted on the nations of the Soviet Union. I shrank from this, afraid that what, I would not be able to do it justice. So then that leads into why he wrote this, which I think is very timely. It was not my intention to provide a balance sheet, a sort of final account of my studies of Russia or the Soviet Union. I had other plans and priorities. But then came the final drop that made my cup run over. What decided and urged me on was Putin's annexation of the Crimea and the undeclared war on Ukraine. It was this, so I found, that forced me to take one more look at the empire that had disappeared. He's talking about the Soviet Union empire. This was the context in which I formed the plan for the present book. Um, he says that in June 2014 he gave a talk in Munich. Um, when he presented, what he says here, an outline of my thinking under, under the title, An Archaeology of Communism, Forming an Image of 20th Century Russia. Um, yes, so that's it. So the genesis of that is, I guess this is his, like, ultimate work then on the topic of, uh, you know, kind of closing, <laughs> closing the book, sort of, on the empire, the Soviet Union that he has uh, studied for most of his life. Um, and he has, he's very close to the topic, obviously, because he says here in, the, in his preface, I have personally experienced a major portion of Soviet history of its late period. 
Um, ever since my first visit in 1966, I've traveled all over the Soviet Union, explored and studied in it. Like many people who come from the smaller spaces of Central Europe, I was endlessly fascinated by its landscapes, rivers, uh, history, and people. I was touched and moved by the generosity of members of the war generation who had undergone such horrific sufferings uh, towards a young German whose father fought as a soldier of the Wehrmacht on the Eastern Front. I listened to their life stories, the likes of which were not to be found even in great literary accounts, but again and again I found myself confronted by people's depressing experiences, the images of stolen lifetimes, and the expectation that after all the terrors and monstrosities, Russia might finally become a quote-unquote normal country. And I, you know, we're still waiting for that to happen, right? <laughs> It is. It can be depressing. Uh, as someone who's who studied Russia, uh, not as a historian, you know, mostly just as a you know amateur aficionado, amateur historian. Uh, I've written no books, but I've read a lot of Russian history and Soviet Union history, and it you come away with a feeling of. I think depression is the word. Um, you see such promise. Um, and it's it's always thwarted um, by either you know um, rancid ideology or um, you know just uh, a sense that you know and, and maybe that's why I'm drawn to the Russian uh, the Russian writers you know Dostoevsky um, kind of kind of captures that ineffable feeling of the hope and promise. Of a, of, a, of a people that is just never really truly um, material, never materializes, you know? It's always hijacked by something. Um, anyway, but the Soviet century is Karl Schlegel's massive new work that uh, goes into the, the, the big things and the little things, and it is richly illustrated throughout. Um, uh, once I get through more of this, I'd like to return um, return to this on this channel and, and give you some more thoughts. I'll take some notes and, and have more uh, thoughts on the matter. But uh, for right now, I am just so excited to start digging into this. Um, gosh, there's just so much... Because you know he's involving a lot, in, and from what I can tell too, from what I've been reading, as I've been browsing through the different chapters, there's so much involved here. There's culture, there's literature, there's politics, there's um, music, um, the arts. And, um, and then here's the gulag, you know. Oh. So, I mean, there's so many interesting things in this book that uh, will, you know. Oh, yeah, the topography itself. Oh, and there's Rudolf Nuriet. Yeah, I told you, like, ballet and, you know, the opera. Not the opera, but the ballet is big there, right? Moose's the ballet. Um, so there's it covers everything. Fashion. Uh, oh, Roxy. Well, Roxy wants into it now. We even have like the athletes and the, the bodybuilders. <laughs> Come on up. Sorry, guys. <laughs> the dogs are back in, back in play now. Um, Yes, so you guys, I'm so excited for the Soviet century. Now, more details on the giveaway. I'm going to, sorry, <laughs> I am going to open up the, um, the opportunity for you guys to put your name below if you're interested in a copy. There will be one winner. I have one copy that the Princeton will send out. So I'm going to open this up for about a week. So today is March 28th. I think that gives plenty of people a week to find the video, to see it, click on it, watch it, and put their name in. So I'm going to look at my calendar. So next Tuesday, okay, we are going to, um, next Tuesday is the 4th. So by the end of day on the 4th, I will I will close it and on April 5th I will randomly select a winner and then I will uh, need you to send me email me um, your uh, 
your email address. I'll announce the winner uh, on the channel, and uh, and then you guys can uh, hit me up on DM or something with your, your mailing address so that I can pass that along to Princeton. But I want to thank Princeton University Press. They reached out to me and said, we'd love to partner with you on getting the word out about this book. And I was so ex excited. I kind of knew I had heard about this book was coming, and I couldn't wait to just kind of, you know, cover it. Um, this is it's a massive work, you guys. It's it's really important addition to our understanding of um, studies of uh, just Russia Soviet Union studies. But uh, it's timely, and in, in the things that are going on, and and it, it's time that we kind of look back and and understand what it was like in the USSR I mean, to live under communism and you know uh, the different um, permutations of communism that we see floating around uh, today and in different ideas and it's not just contained within Russia they're everywhere so <laughs> it's time to be aware of these things and and communism is not just an economic system it's definitely a philosophy um, and whether you call it communism, the seeds of socialism that usually turn into communism, uh, they are abounding and they are all around. And um, it's important to know. It's important to know and to remember what people actually lived through and not forget. We need to, to, um, to, keep, to keep that in mind when we are trying to generate our own new utopias. It seems like human beings could never seem to learn that utopia cannot exist. Not in this life. Um, but that's just my opinion. All right, Daisy, thank you for the squeaks. Uh, all right, guys, so one lucky winner. Whoever is interested in the Soviet century, drop your name below. Let me know that you're interested. And again, this will be a random generator. I am not putting timestamps or anything. No, not first, no first come, first serve. It's just we really are going to be doing the luck of the draw on this one. So guys, check it out. Soviet Century, Princeton University Press uh, by Carl Schlogel. Soviet Century, Archaeology of a Lost World. I'm so excited. Can't wait to share this with you. And, uh, and also for one lucky winner. So until next time, BookTube, thanks for watching the video. Thanks for uh, hearing this out, and, um, and if you if you don't win for any reason, well, I'm not in frame. Um, you can still ask your library or something or someone to stock this, you know, uh, to, to order it. Um, I can't imagine that there'd be a long wait list at a library, but you never know. Um, you know, with us history nuts, us history nerds, right? Um, we kind of get a lot of we get we get things first. <laughs> All right, guys, so until next time, thanks for watching, and good luck. Bye.